Welcome, church. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, for this next installment of NCCP Church Anywhere. Uh, today we take a first look at who Jesus is from the Gospel of Mark. Would you please take a moment to pray with me? Almighty God, we just ask by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to the truth of your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. And as I said, we take a look at Mark's Gospel today. And Mark's gospel is, is quite unique. We believe it's the very first gospel written, the earliest gospel that was written. It's also the shortest. And that is probably because in Mark's gospel, there is this immediacy. There is this sense of urgency. Mark doesn't feed us with merely just milk and cereal, but goes right to the meat and potatoes of the gospel. Mark's gospel flows at breakneck speed, all the way up until Jesus sets foot in Jerusalem, and then finally Mark starts to gear down some so that we could catch up and maybe even catch our breath. Mark is fond of using a particular Greek adverb throughout his gospel all the way up to Jerusalem. And this particular Greek adverb is Euthus, and it conveys the meaning of immediately. And translators have translated using a, a variety of different words. And just in our first chapter alone of Mark, we see immediately, suddenly, as soon as, just then, at once. Words like that to describe this one word, euthus. If we just simply look at the first 20 verses that come right before our passage today, we can kind of see that take place. It begins with Mark's very first verse, the beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's Son. And then Mark immediately goes to introducing us to John the Baptist, which Jesus also comes to be baptized. And immediately Jesus is driven out into the wilderness for 40 days. And upon Jesus' return, John is arrested and Jesus begins his ministry. He is walking along the Sea of Galilee where he sees Peter and Andrew. He simply says to them, follow me and I will teach you how to fish for people. There's no conversations, there's no questions asked. They just immediately follow Jesus. They come upon James and John, and immediately Jesus calls them to follow. And they also leave their father and the hired help behind to follow Jesus. All this in 20 verses, a half a page. Now this is large print, mind you. All this takes place well over a 40-day period in just a half a page. And that word immediately is used over and over every few verses. In our passage today, it's used three different times. David Stawick, our visiting homeless, states that Mark is a lot like the John Madden of the Gospels. First Jesus is doing this, and then immediately, boom! And then Jesus is doing this, and immediately, boom! So every time we see that word immediately, or euthus, we can replace it with John Madden's boom, because that's how fast this gospel travels. When we look at our scripture passage today, there are various headings for this passage, depending on what translation we're looking at. Some of the headings are Jesus drives out an impure spirit, Jesus throws a demon out, the man with an unclean spirit, or Eugene Peterson's paraphrase of the Bible, a new religion that does what it says. The very beginning of this passage, we read that Jesus and his followers went to Capernaum. Immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and he started teaching. 
The people were amazed by his teaching, for he was teaching them with authority, not like the scribes or the legal experts. Not that there is anything inherently wrong about the teaching of the scribes, but the teaching of the scribes involves the handing on of traditions that have been passed down for many, many generations. The scribes really are saying, this is what God has said. This is what God has said through the prophets. And this is what we do. Because as we learned in week one, tradition is important. It reminds us of who we are and whose we are. An interesting thing is it says that Jesus teaches as one with authority. And that Greek word is exousia, another vocabulary word for us for today. It means, or it conveys the meaning of divine power. Jesus' words carry weight. What Jesus says is logical. It makes sense. He explains what God has always said, God's good direction. And we are not privileged to even know what Jesus taught, but all were amazed. And then we hear, see this word again suddenly. Suddenly there in the synagogue is a person with an evil spirit. And he questions Jesus. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus tells him to be silent and come out of the man and this evil presence is sent packing. What we see is that when Jesus teaches, he teaches as one with authority. Jesus' words heal. And Jesus doesn't just teach with words. He also teaches by actions. If we don't understand his words, what he did for his audience was show them, illustrate what that looks like. So Jesus' words and actions heal us from the evil that lurks within each one of us. And if we are truly honest with ourselves, we understand and we know that evil has an influence on each and every one of us. Because we are surrounded by it, day in and day out. Evil can be very persuasive, very secretive. It kind of creeps in on us. It tries to dictate how we live and move and have our being. But Jesus comes to set us free from being in that kind of infirmity. Jesus comes to make the unclean clean. Jesus doesn't just provide information, but provides transformation. This person that comes to Jesus with this unclean spirit, like all of us, is made in the image of God, even though we have all fallen from that image. Jesus restores this person back into fullness, back into completeness. We all have evil that lurks around us. When we do selfish and self-centered things, when we judge other people by the way they look or what they wear or what they do or what they seem to do and thousands of other things, we are letting evil have its way with us. And as we think about this passage, and we think about that man with this unclean spirit, and we think about how evil lurks in each one of us, we are reminded that Monday is Martin Luther King Jr.'s day that we celebrate, the man, the preacher. This man, this preacher, had a vision, had a dream, that one day, someday soon, that people wouldn't be judged by the way they look or the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. One of our parishioners, who was an English teacher, says this passage reminds him of Emerson's essay on self-reliance. 
They love not realities and creators, but names and customs. Every Stoic is a Stoic. But in Christendom, where is the Christian? Many of us proclaim to be Christians, and, and that word really means little Christ. We are to illustrate and be like a little Jesus, each and every one of us, a copy of who Jesus is. And so when we look to this Jesus, who this Jesus is, and we look at our scripture passage today, if we continue to the end of chapter 1, there's a couple other passages. And what Mark is painting a picture of is Jesus is teaching his disciples then, those four first disciples, and us disciples today, what ministry looks like. And it began in the synagogue and the religious space for prayer and proclamation of the word. They leave the synagogue and immediately go to Peter and Andrew's home where Peter's mother-in-law is very ill with a high fever. And Jesus props her up and she is healed and she begins to serve them. When the sun went down, the Sabbath was over, everyone in the community brought their sick and their diseased and people stricken by evil. And Jesus restored each and every one of them. And before it was even morning, while it was still dark, Jesus goes to a deserted place to pray. His disciples look for him. And they take a tour of, a preaching tour of Galilee. And what we see is that ministry begins in the synagogue in the religious space. It moves to the home, the private space, and then out into the community, the public space. At the very end of Chapter 1, Jesus even goes to the outskirts of the community, to the margins of the community, where the excluded, the impoverished, and the untouchables live. As Jesus touches a leper and cleanses him from his skin, contagious skin disease. That poor man, that poor leper, was made to live on the outskirts of the city, away from all people, couldn't even work because of his contagious skin disease. He was made to beg for every morsel and crumb that he had or was given. Jesus restores him back to being a vital part of community because he too was made in the image of God to love and be loved. What Jesus expects from his followers is more than just amazement. Jesus expects action. Will we do as Jesus does? Will we be doers and not just hearers of God's good direction? Things to ponder as we go through the week and we discover who this Jesus is. Amen.